Well, where one run ends, another begins. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to start cheating at this point. Um, unfortunately, we can't catch any Pokemon that are gonna turn to ground types, you know, in the early routes. They're just any option. I mean, in the early Gen 1 games, you had access to Nidoran, but that's not the case in these remakes. They replaced Nidoran with, like, Mankey. Which I guess does give you a better chance against Brock since you, know, you can get access to like Karai Chop or Low Kick, you know, early on to deal some heavy damage to those rock types, you know, through a, a fighting type weakness exploit. But, you know, it kind of sucks that they took away the Nidorans, because that's what I'd rather go with. But no, I can't catch them until I get access to uh, Under Route 3, so we're going to have to cheat ourselves, you know, a Nidoran male, at least one, the power up. I mean, Nidoran female is a far rarer counter in this game, and I'd rather just do the trade for it on the ground so I can level that one faster later. Unfortunately, it's still not going to be as useful as the male version, probably, because the male version, you know, plays more to my style of hitting hard and fast. I mean, not that Nidoran male has the best stats for that. It's a bit underpowered in comparison to some other options, obviously, but it also has more speed, so... It's a bit better off than Geodude or Onyx, you know, trying to power their way through things. And I honestly don't even know if we're going to use a Cryhorn this run, because while it does qualify as a ground type, it comes so late in the game, it's going to be hard to justify raising it properly. I mean, that's one of the biggest things I find with these uh, mono runs, is I can pick up early, it usually ends up becoming the focus of the team, almost always, because it's the thing I can level up the most. And therefore, I'll have the most, you know, time and energy spent into it, and not want to deal with, you know, a late game addition, unless it's like a really strong Pokemon like Tauros or something, where, you know, it's not going to add any additional, you know, weak spots. Like, you do not mess with Tauros, man. Like, in Gen 1, it was the King of the Ring, and it's still pretty good in Gen 2 and 3. I mean, sure, its star is definitely no longer as shines as bright as it used to, but... Tauros used to be a contender back when Hyper Beam was a lot more broken. Well, since I don't care to look up the name of a Sky God, we shall just call you Skyler. After all, you're not worthy of being a god. For I will defeat you many, many times. Your very own Pokemon Legend is about to unfold. And yeah, at some point we'll probably do, like, ghosts and stuff too. Though I imagine the ghost run's gonna drive me up the wall, because we're gonna have to deal with so many normal types, you know? It's gonna be like, ugh, curse. Like, the only move we can really pick up for uh, Ghastly in Gen 3 is, like, Thunderbolt. And don't get me wrong, Thunderbolt's a solid move. It really is, but it does mean, you know, I'm not gonna have an answer to... Well, I guess with ground types I can always use, like, Nightshade. So it's not as bad as it could be. Albeit, Nightshade is a bit interesting, because it was glitched in Gen 1. Yeah, in Gen 1, you actually could use Nightshade, a like ghost-type attack, on normal-type Pokémon. And still do, you know, level-based damage to them. <laughs> Despite the fact they're meant to be immune. Yeah, that was a thing. But I guess to make our rival more challenging, we will take Charmander, of all things, yeah. We're gonna let him have Squirtle. I suppose on the plus side, that does mean I don't have to worry about Gyarados. And I could have gone for more of a twofer, I suppose, if I uh, let him have Bulbasaur, maybe? He doesn't have Gyarados and Venusaur, but let's face it, he's going to have Executor probably if he doesn't have Venusaur on the team. So he's going to have a Grass and Psyche type, which will give him advantage on probably our strongest picks on this team. Nidoran Male. So yeah, so we're going to take a Charmander. Try and, you know up the challenge a little bit near the end. This that's just how it has to be sometimes. You know, I'm gonna give it a nickname. It shall be known as Cutter. For it will cut trees like an expert. Well now is that a female Charmander? Hmm. Don't see that too often. Like the stars tend to be like 85% male and like 15% female. That tends to be like the standard ratio from what I remembered right, so... You don't see female versions of them as often as you'd like sometimes, unless you like breed them a lot with a ditto. Like, bring on the love machine! Yep. I can only hope we got uh, an 
advantageous nature for what we're about to try here, because let's face it, we're probably just going to try and cut our way through, through a scratch. I mean, inflicting damage is like the fastest way to win, after all. And if we don't win, you know, it's not as big a deal. Yeah, he's going for some defense lowering. I could try to counter with lowering his attack in return, but I just don't feel like it. I'd rather commit to, you know, trying to tear him apart. Just very, very fast. Well, critical hit, please. Ah, darn it. And my rival got it. Well, whatever. I'm only gonna lose out on 175 experience points. It just ain't worth crying about. But, however, since you had no warning this time, I'll pay for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Plus, that you can argue it's not fair because I can't set up for this battle. Like, it's down to just pure luck. Like, I got completely screwed over by a random critical hit. It's like, I can't plan for that. And I'm not willing to reset over it, because I can get 175 bucks, you know, later, I'm sure. I mean, we got the Verse Seeker in this version of the game, so... We have plenty of battles we can do later. But I suppose I could have, you know, saved myself by taking the potion out of my PC. After all, I do get a free potion in there, if I remember correctly, so I could have used that. Be like a pro strat, like, I'm gonna use an item! So I can win $175. Yeah, I know. Just doesn't seem worth it, does it? And I really don't need to fight any of these rats, Hattas. Oh, sure. I think I do me good to defeat them. Because we're not keeping Cutter for offensive use here. Like, you're an HM slave, Cutter. Get used to it. You shall do nothing useful your entire life besides cut some trees. And that's assuming I don't pick up an otter to do that for me. And put you in the box. Forevermore. But at least the, uh, wild Pokemon are willing to leave us alone for now. Now let's see... Oh yeah, we gotta go back to Pallet Town. This game hates us. Like, I don't know why they had to leave this in the game. Like, this is such an annoying part to deal with, like... You must, uh, go back to where you came from, you know? And then when we get back up here, we're gonna have to learn about how to catch Pokémon. I know, right? Been doing it for 20-some years, I think I know quite a bit about catching Pokémon. I don't think I need a tutorial on that. It's not like it's some new system that wasn't in a previous game or something. Where reading the tutorial might actually be of some benefit. Like, I was messing around with Disgaea 5 and learned, oh, I can, you know, interrogate people and get stat-boosting items. I'm like, oh, well, that didn't exist before. Thank you, game. That's actually somewhat useful information to give me. Like, it's a system I haven't messed with before. Though, admittedly, I know, they gotta leave that stuff in there for people that jump into a series, you know, four or five games in. I'll be with this guy. I suppose that does make sense, since most of the games aren't really related in terms of story anyway. Like, the only direct sequel in, uh, Dis the Skya franchise is D2. Which I picked up, but haven't played through more than, like, the first chapter or so. <sighs> Though I have to admit, I do love the cheat shop in those games. If only because it allows you to raise the levels of enemies without having to pass tons of bills. It's just a lot more convenient. Because in the early games, you actually could raise enemy levels, but you'd have to pass a bill and give up mana for it. And then spend more mana to lower them back to normal, after you've done that. You know, if you want to fight enemies at their normal level so you can get through uh, items and stuff easier to power level up that stuff. Or deal with the super bosses, you know, while they're at their weakest. Because I've never really wanted to fight them after jacking them up to max before. Yeah, yeah, you go borrow a town map, I don't care. I got the map up here. I've played through this generation so many times, I know the map inside and out, basically. But we need to go back and learn how to catch a Pokémon. And since I had to suffer the indignity of seeing that tutorial every single time, my audience can stick around and see that tutorial every single time. 
or quit out, because let's face it, the first episode's usually one of the more boring ones in these runs, because I'm not actually doing any real fighting yet. And I'm not really offering the greatest, most detailed uh, plan out there either, because let's face it, I can't access breeding in this game until the post-game content, so I can't exactly be like, oh, I'm gonna do this or that with the move set, you know, and make it really cool by breeding this move on there somehow. Like, I can't do that. <laughs> like, in Gen 2, like, that's one of my plans with the flying and ground runs I want to do uh, revisits for. Like, I want to do some very selective breeding on, you know, Sparrow to give it Tri-Attack, and do breeding on uh, Dodeo to get one with Flail. Because, let's face it, Dodeo's got, you know, high speed and a free solid attack stat. Especially when it evolves in Dodrio. But it has really poor defenses, so something like Flail really helps it out. The same cannot be said for, you know, certain other Pokemon, you know? Like, having Flail as a backup's always good, in my opyinion That's why that Red Gyarados is so special, because it can have Flail and other moves, you know, that would only get if you evolved it from a Magikarp way late. Like, it has Thrash and Flail, which is impossible. Because you can only get Flail on a Gyarados if you catch it as a Gyarados, and you can only get Thrash if you evolve a Magikarp at, like, level 30, because it learns it then, I think? No, wait. Magikarp learns Flail at level 30. Yeah. And you can catch a Gyarados with Thrash. I got that backwards, sorry. I'm misremembering slightly. Apparently, you know, I'm, I'm losing myself in all my Pokemon facts now. Well, that'll do for this run. I'm gonna have to go cheat myself up a Nidoran. Yeah, I know, I could give myself a Geodude, but just like... Yeah, we'll go with the first Ground-type Pokémon we can catch, or Pokémon that can evolve into a Ground-type, and that would be Nidoran, male or female. And male is more predominant in this run in this uh, game, so that's what we're gonna go with. We're gonna go with a Nidoran male for our first Pokémon. And then evolve it as quickly as possible. Until next time, then. See ya.